Chidori, the head of the preparation committee, storms the entrance welcome gate for the cultural festival, upset that it looks nothing of how it ought to look. Sergeant Sosuke explains to her that since last year's theme was, peace, he's decided this year's theme will be, security. He adds that the gate is both an observation site and a security checkpoint, assuming terrorists were to attack everyone on the cultural festival day. Chidori is sick of having Sosuke imagine every event will lead to getting attacked by terrorists. She thinks everyone who shows up for the cultural festival will feel frightened by the sight of the gate and suggests dismantling it, as it's, moreover, taking too much of the entire budget. Sosuke looks mystified. While Chidori continues to make her point, she gets sprayed with paint by the malfunctioning marking system. Boiling over, Chidori punches Sosuke away, then, suddenly heartbroken, begins to cry about the summer in the second year of high school being very special for every girl and not wishing to see hers get ruined. She says after the event she'll spend the remaining week at home, doing nothing until school starts. Realizing his opportunity, Sosuke asks that she comes with him to a southern island. Chidori blushes awkwardly. She wonders if it won't be dangerous, to which Sosuke guarantees will be safe. Making up her mind, Chidori consents. While leaving, she gets sprayed by paint again, but she shrugs it off this time, her head in the clouds. Chidori prepares for her trip with Sosuke. As she contemplates the possibility of getting in danger with him, she dismisses it, saying nothing bad can happen to her while she's with him. On the Pasadena, a crew of officers panic over a possible collision. When the submarine in their radar mysteriously vanishes, an officer tells the commander that it might be Toy Box, a ghost submarine, that appears quietly and vanishes quietly. Meanwhile, Captain Testarossa and Commander Mardukas, who are the supposed ghost submarine, feel guilty for almost causing trouble to the earlier officers. Mardukas affirms they achieved a good result from the test though, adding that they'll correct the stillness of the ordinary propulsion of their submarine next time. After agreeing, Captain suggests they return to base before they run late for a birthday party. Chidori looks stunned at the sight of their plane. When Sosuke says he prepared it just for her, Chidori flushes, flattered. Heading into the plane, Sosuke informs her they're going to Mithril's West Pacific Fleet Base, as Captain would like to see her. Chidori stops, disappointed. She'd expected a getaway alone with Sosuke. Captain receives an important task and cancels their return to the base for the birthday party. When Mardukas wonders if they're headed for the Beryl Deabu Islands, Captain affirms so, adding it has something to do with chemical weapons, as she's heard an armed group attacked and occupied a chemical weapon storage facility in the islands. Mardukas says if the storage facility were bombed then the entire islands will be destroyed. While sitting awkwardly in the plane, Sosuke tries to make conversation, but Chidori is uninterested. All of a sudden, Sosuke receives instructions to get on board the Danan with Chidori. Quickly, he tells Chidori to get in a swimming suit, leaving her staring in shock, as this wasn't in their earlier plan. When she emerges, ready, Chidori, without prior notice, jumps out of the plane with her. Chidori screams, panicking, before falling into the ocean. Captain sweetly welcomes Chidori to the Tuatha de Danan, but Chidori is still upset with Sosuke for pulling her out of the plane and getting her wet. Captain apologizes on his behalf, as their earlier arrangements changed. Finally cheerful, Chidori says it's all right, as she's wanted to see Captain too. After Captain asks Sosuke to leave, she tells Chidori to put on some clothes and come with her, as she intends to show her around the submarine. While giving Chidori a tour, Captain awkwardly bumps into a pole. Chidori looks shocked, wondering if she really is a captain. Captain brags that the submarine is like her house, regardless of her appearance, and she knows everything about it. As she leads Chidori into a new section, Chidori is stunned to receive a round of salutes from the crew. Chidori shimmers shyly, then salutes back. Later while celebrating the submarine's first year, Weber declares that whoever wins the draw in a bingo game will get a kiss from Captain. Captain, with a blush, quickly disagrees. Weber mischievously asks her to give out her favorite underwear instead. With Captain incensed, Weber takes it for a no and agrees on a kiss. Before Captain can argue again, he begins the draw. As the first draw goes to Sosuke, Chidori flushes timidly. After the draw, McAllen wins Captain's kiss, to Chidori's relief. Later in the party, a friend teases Sosuke that Chidori has good shape and a great fashion sense that'd make other guys undoubtedly in love with her. Sosuke pretends not to care, as he claims to be worried about their mission and Chidori being unnecessary baggage. Meanwhile, the secret group continues its assault on Beryl Deabu Island. A comrade informs Goran, the leader, that an assault unit has landed on the ocean, adding that Sosuke and Chidori may possibly be on it. When the comrade sounds concerned about Chidori's safety, deeming her passing might be a problem, Goran vows to keep her safe, before laughing mischievously. 
While stepping out, Chidori and Mao come across Weber, eavesdropping on their conversation. Weber stutters in embarrassment, pretending to look for prizes for the consolation bingo game. When Sosuke confesses it to be a lie, that Weber was seeking something naughty instead, Mao, being his big sister, knocks him hard on the head. Later, Sosuke gives Chidori a tour of the rest of the submarine. Captain invites Chidori for a discussion. When Chidori assumes it's about the mithril, Captain tells her it's about the whispered, and admits to being one of them. Chidori is stunned to learn this confession. Captain explains to her that the whispered is a treasure trove of black technology, and under certain conditions, it can supply scientific theories and engineering, which are far superior to current standards. She adds that Chidori also has the gift, as she noticed the first time in the mountains of Hank's autonomous region, while the second time was at the battle with the behemoth. She says Chidori had known something she'd never learned on both occasions. As Chidori recalls the memories, Captain politely reminds her she helped her the second time. When Chidori finds it confusing, Captain explains to her that the process is called resonance, where the whispered can share thoughts from deep within their souls. She says it happens when they both strongly feel the need for each other. With Chidori still amazed, Captain warns her it's a dangerous act, suggesting they try to avoid the whispered's resonance as much as possible. Chidori, confused, ponders why such a useful power is considered dangerous, so Captain clarifies that the resonance is a mind-sharing process that blends them into each other, rather than letting them have a normal conversation. She says they can lose themselves if they make a crucial mistake, nonetheless, Chidori still admits to finding it hard to totally understand. Finally, Captain says there are people who want the Whispered's power at whatever cost. Chidori recalls Goron as such an enemy, to which Captain agrees, adding that Goron may try to take either of them. Sensing the fear in her, Captain assures Chidori that she'll be kept safe. When it dawns on her that Sosuke has been following her around as a protector, Chidori begins to laugh. After comparing Sosuke to an irrelevant person, Captain, who can't take any more of the insults, confesses to having a secret relationship with Sosuke, shocking Chidori and leaving her to sputter. Commander Kalinin tells his team that an armed group has seized the U.S. military chemical weapons disposal facility in the Republic of Pirio, where a few hundred tons of nerve gas is stored, adding that the group is threatening to spread the stored gas all over the cities if their demands aren't met. He declares that their mission is to suppress the enemy's AS and save the hostages without destroying the facility. He professes it'll be a difficult mission, since they've learned that the enemy's AS is thought to be Soviet Union's latest model and the successor to the Savage, another powerful AS. He assures them it's possible to fight the AS machines with ordinary mecha and war tactics. Nevertheless, he suggests they pay more attention to Goron's as, as ordinary attacks have no effects on him, in which case they'd best run. As the men argue over it, Commander Kalinin declares it's an order, and promises to punish the men who ignore his warnings. He puts Sosuke on the duty of destroying Goron's as, also known as, Venom. Skeptical, Sosuke wonders what will happen if he fails to destroy Venom, so Commander Kalinin assures him, with a keen look, that they'll all be gone. Chidori visits Mao as they prepare for their mission. When Weber thinks she's worried about him and has come to see him off, Mao, knowing better, knocks him out of the way and informs Chidori they're about to sortie. Seeing everyone occupied, Chidori shyly apologizes and walks away. As the mission draws nearer, Captain commands that airtight chambers 1 through 6 be filled with water, then Commander Kalinin tells the teams they'll be starting the mission from underwater, and instructs that they split up the AS into three teams and go to their stations after passing the waypoint. As Captain directs the AS hatches to be opened, the AS all move out. Mao asks Sosuke if he's nervous. When he tries to deny it, she tells him not to do anything extreme. She guesses he's worried about protecting Chidori just like the other guys would be, but she wants him to focus on their mission. Sosuke agrees. As the team passes waypoint 3, they disperse as instructed. Arriving at a tunnel, Mao teases Danny Gon that the tunnel is convenient and cozy, knowing he's claustrophobic. Rained, Danny Gon accepts to go in, joking he might trigger an explosion along the way. Gwen wonders if they'll succeed in the mission. He believes if a mistake is made in defusing the bombs then they'll all have to run away. Weber laughs in agreement. Gwen wonders how they're supposed to save the hostages, and prevent chemical weapons from exploding. As Sosuke surveys the islands, a bomb goes off, startling him. Before he panics, Mao reports that she has defused the other bombs, thereby lifting the hunting ban. Quickly, the Mithril AS attacks the enemy units. After succeeding, Danny Gon and Mao report that some hostages have been secured. While checking for Goron, he suddenly appears and begins to fire at them. When Sosuke begins to shoot back, Goron runs at him, impervious to his attack. As Sosuke freezes up, Mao sweeps in and rescues him, commanding him to pull himself together. 
Suddenly, Mao gets wounded by Goron and knocked out, but Sosuke narrowly rescues her. Danigon tells Sosuke to bait Goron to the east side of the island, saying he has a plan. Arriving there, Goron assaults Sosuke. Just as he almost thrusts his armor, Weber shoots at him from across the islands until the building crumbles on him. As they begin to ponder on his passing, Goron emerges from the rubble and surrenders with a sinister smile. After the mission, Mao finally gets treated. When the others notice Sosuke looks worried and guilty, they assure him she'll be alright. As Goron gets arrested, Commander Kalinin suspiciously wonders what his plans are. After Goron denies having any plans, Commander Kalinin promises to eliminate him after making him confess everything, however, Goron merely laughs. Later, Commander Kalinin tells the lieutenant he doesn't trust Goron's actions, as he's not known to do something meaningless like taking over an island and surrendering so easily. He thinks Goron planned everything carefully to secure his safety, nonetheless believing it can be a diversion from a major attack by his main force. He instructs that Goron be kept in complete isolation until the medical inspection is complete. Once discovered that he has no problems, he wants every other health issue to be ignored, regardless of whether it is true or not. Later, back in the De Danan, Chidori is alarmed to see Mao be brought in injured. As she tries to follow them, a doctor tells Chidori to remain calm, that Mao merely has a concussion and a fractured ribcage. Just then, Sosuke passes by, ignoring her. Worried, Chidori follows him and asks why he feels dejected and if someone passed away during the mission. Sosuke, solemn, tells her no one did, however, he feels disappointed in himself for making a crucial mistake, confessing that he's finding it difficult to control the AS. Frustrated, he calls the machine a curse. In an attempt to pacify him, Chidori suggests he get some rest, but Sosuke gets more frustrated, alleging he's only had bad luck since the hijacking event, with Goron, the AS, and Chidori being nothing but trouble to him. Incensed, Chidori tells him she never asked for a protector and suggests he quits if she's bringing him so much trouble. When Sosuke says he can't, because he's the only one that can perform the duty, Chidori fumes and runs away tearfully, breezing past Weber and Liang. Angry, Weber punches Sosuke, accusing him of taking out his frustration on Chidori because he failed to do a good job. When Sosuke denies it, Weber tells him a girl like Chidori doesn't cry easily. Becoming more furious, Weber yells at Sosuke to stop overrating himself because he can't fight alone. Back on the Pasadena, the commander receives a report that the ghost submarine may pass by in 12 hours and he's compelled to identify it and gather as much data on it as possible. Enraged, the commander wonders how he's supposed to find a ghost submarine. In the meantime, Captain asks if Venom is damaged. After she's told that the shoulder armor and ECS lens are the only things damaged, she suggests they dissemble it at the base. Chidori, still solemn, sits quietly in the kitchen. When Liang suggests she get some sleep or go see Captain, she assumes he doesn't want her presence anymore and quietly leaves. Chidori goes around the sub, depressed and feeling unwanted. Meanwhile, Sosuke looks everywhere for her. Sad, Chidori checks some memorable photos, finally having an idea, she runs off. With Goron bound, Liang wonders why they have to stay and watch him. After Danny Gon calls Goron a dangerous man who constantly needs to be monitored, he pulls a gun and shoots Liang. Freeing Goron, Danny Gon says the mithril is useless and he wishes to work for whoever pays the most, nevertheless, he doesn't intend to follow anyone's orders. Relieved, Goron thanks him, then knocks him down he takes his gun and attempts to shoot him, but Danny Gon quickly pleads for mercy, promising to obey Goron. As they attempt to infiltrate the command center, Danny Gon and Goron are spotted by McAllen. McAllen, holding them at gunpoint, tells Gwen to alert Captain and the others, but Gwen shoots him instead. When hiding McAllen away, Chidori runs into them and holds still, afraid. As she tries to run, Gwen catches her and holds her against the wall, to Goron's satisfaction. When Gwen suggests eliminating her, Goron says she's very special and must be kept alive. After getting into the command center, Goron orders the sub to head north. When Captain refuses, he threatens to shoot an officer. Afraid of seeing the threat get carried out, Captain directs that the sub's direction be changed. As the sub starts to head north, Goron shows Captain a drive he acquired from the engineering department at the Mithril headquarters. After slotting in the drive, Goron takes control of the sub and commands for an evacuation drill. With the crew hurrying to the main hangar, Sosuke forces his way through and comes across Weber, who smiles impressively at him. Sosuke guesses something bad is happening and hurries towards the command center with him. Later in the command center, Goron commands the AI to sound the alarm for fire and reactor accidents and seal the crew in the hangar. Meanwhile, the Pasadena finally detects the ghost submarine in their radar and prepares to ambush it. 
As Sosuke and Weber tip closer to the command center, Sosuke suspects Goron may be responsible for the false alarm and suggests they get a gun. At the same time in the command center, Goron boasts about cutting off all forms of support for Captain, but she tells him there are as in a hangar and if a hole was made in a bulkhead with the monomolecular cutter, it will create space for the AS to come through. Impressed, Goron asks AI Kuen to change the setting of the aft air supply system and set the oxygen concentration to the maximum, thereby ensuring a single spark will create a terrible explosion. When Captain warns him against it, Goron declares he's now the captain and roars with evil laughter. When the crew begins to feel lightheaded, a crew member discovers the compartment is being filled with highly concentrated oxygen, and that the door panels aren't working. As they try to contact the command center, they realize the communications in the submarine are blacked out. Captain, desperate to win back the situation, resonates with Chidori, telling her that the Danan recognizes Goron as the captain and it'll be impossible to cancel the registration with the usual procedures, in which case, they need to take back control over the submarine directly. Handing Chidori the key to her safe, Captain tells her there's a universal key for the sub inside the safe. She wants Chidori to find the Lady Chapel in the central computer room of the third deck. Confused, Chidori accidentally speaks out, drawing Goron's attention. Goron grows suspicious and asks Chidori what she's hiding behind her. As he attempts to shoot her, Captain quickly springs up and fires at Goron, but he dives away just in time. The Captain fires at Danigon and screams at Chidori to run. As Chidori takes off, Danigon tries to catch her but misses. Weber and Sosuke hear the gunshots and run toward it. After Captain runs out of bullets, Goron smacks the gun off. Goron threatens to punish Captain for attacking him. He commands A.I. Kuen to look for surface ships nearby that he can attack. In the meantime, the Pasadena crew informs their commander that their nuclear submarine seems to be chasing something, but they can't seem to find what it is. The commander tells Commander Kalinin that his nuclear submarine seems to be chasing after the ghost submarine, nevertheless, he hopes nothing happens. When A.I. Kuen discovers the American Navy Aegis destroyer, Goran commands it to prepare to launch missiles. Against Captain's warnings, the missiles get launched. Chidori successfully locates Captain's office. After retrieving the universal key, she finds a photograph of Captain and Sosuke together. Intending not to get overcome by jealousy, Chidori immediately puts it back. As she leaves the office, Danny Gon appears. In the meantime, the American Navy noticed the incoming missiles. After firing down one missile, the second missile hits their ship. When Goron learns that the American Navy ship is still afloat without any explosions, he asks Captain why they kept the warheads off the missiles, so she tells him it was an inevitable decision and precaution. Back on the American Navy ship, they learn the missile didn't explode. Perplexed, the commander asks for an explanation from Commander Kalinin who's also perplexed. Commander Kalinin says something could be wrong. He believes if Captain really meant to attack them then the ship would have been blown up to pieces and they'd have attacked again. Weber and Sosuke discover McAllen's body. As they run towards the cafeteria, Gwen shoots at them, but they hide away fast. At the same time, Chidori runs from Danny Gon. When Weber draws Gwen's attention, Sosuke runs to the cafeteria. Arriving in the cafeteria, Sosuke hides away as Danny Gon shoots. Braving himself, Sosuke charges at Danny Gon. When Danny Gon is occupied trying to fight off Sosuke, Chidori slams his head with a pan, giving Sosuke a temporary edge. However, Danny Gon soon starts to get the upper hand, so Sosuke shoots him. As he hurries to help Chidori up, she turns him down, recalling their earlier conversations. Tearful, she says she's not a burden and can take care of herself. Touched, Sosuke apologizes, telling her she's not a burden. Humbly, he reminds her that she's saved him three times already and if it weren't for her he'd be gone already. Moved by his kind words, Chidori relaxes, happy. Suddenly, they hear the sound of an attacker's sonar. In Pasadena, the commander directs torpedoes to be launched on the De Danan as a retaliation for the attack on the American Navy ship. A. Ikoen detects the torpedoes and warns Goron that it's heading for their submarine. Alarmed, Captain asks to take control of the sub before they're hit, but Goron is nonchalant. He says he's not afraid of eternal sleep, and commands A. Ikoen to dive beyond the maximum rated depth. Meanwhile, Weber tries to convince Gwen to switch sides and attack Goron together before they're all eliminated by the torpedoes, but he refuses. He says Mithril is a mercenary unit, not a friend of justice, as a result, he's obliged to work for whoever pays him the most. Chidori and Sosuke arrive at the Lady Chapel. Instinctive, Chidori tells Sosuke that the transfer and response system device is an older model than the one on the Arbalest, as instead of being connected to a Lambda driver, it's connected to the submarine's control system. Just then she lies in a chamber and seals it up. 
Weber, on the other hand, charges at Gwen and knocks his gun away. Gwen re-emerges with a knife and attacks Weber. With Weber looking helpless and Gwen about to shoot him, a knife flies unexpectedly into his neck. While looking for the attacker, Weber strikes Gwen on the head. When Gwen is gone, Mao steps out of the shadows, looking dizzy. Realizing the attacker was Gwen, she wonders what's happening on the sub. When Weber asks if she remembers anything, she says she recalls waking up at the clinic to the sound of an evacuation drill and was unwilling to leave without proper clothing. Fatigued, she passes out. When a fire starts to leak in the sub, Goran smiles happily that his plans are working out well. As the sub continues to descend, the crew looks on anxiously. As it looks like all hope is lost, A.I. Kuhn abruptly shuts down and Danan takes back control of the sub. Immediately, Captain orders it to launch countermeasures, and set them to deep water mode. At Captain's instruction, the torpedoes are counterattacked. The resulting explosion jerks the sub and sends Captain sliding against the wall. Goran looks furious. As all sealed doors begin to open, Captain gladly tells Goran that he can't take back control of the ship. All of a sudden, Sosuke flies into the command center, shooting at Goran. Just then, the sub shudders, spiking out of the ocean and trapping Captain in resonance. When Sosuke is alerted about another incoming torpedo, he holds Captain and braces for impact, but he hears Chidori's voice through Captain, directing him to go after Goran and leave the Danan to handle the submarine. When the crew discovers the sub's safety system for torpedoes has been activated, they realize Captain expected the second torpedo and already executed the emergency solution, much to their relief. In the meantime, Sosuke searches for Goran. While the wounded are being treated, Mardukas is informed that Goran took over the sub's AI and escaped when Captain recovered control. When Mardukas learns that Goran is in the hangar, he commands the crew to arrest him, but as they hurry to Goran, he shoots at them. With the crew scampering to safety, Goran gets into Venom. Noticing the imminent attack, Mardukas instructs that the injured crew be taken out of the hangar. Before much damage is done, Venom and Sosuke's AS face off, ready for battle. Determined, Sosuke attacks first and knocks down Venom. Retaliating, Venom blasts him away. As Venom begins to vandalize the other AS, Sosuke assaults him and damages the suit. Deranged and intrigued, Goran beings to laugh. Realizing the severe damage done, Venom clings to Sosuke's as, intent on blowing both up. Sosuke desperately attempts to get free, but fails. Goran tells him he has 300 kilograms of explosives in the Venom and expects it's enough to sink the submarine when it explodes. Sosuke looks horrified. Meanwhile, Chidori and Captain are still stuck in resonance. As the Pasadena prepares to launch another attack, they receive a command to cease. The crew worries that the flight hatch has opened up and can't find a way to stop it. While wondering who ordered the hatch to open, Chidori informs them through Danan to stay calm. Just then, Captain comes awake. With 30 seconds left to self-destruct, Sosuke despairingly hammers at Venom. Goran laughs crazily. With the seconds ticking off, Sosuke makes a final attempt and finally kicks Venom off. Anchoring himself to the sub, Sosuke slides them off, then as Venom lunges into the ocean, Sosuke gets pulled back on the sub. When the timer hits, a terrible explosion erupts from the ocean and knocks the sub aside. After the devastation, Sosuke emerges, and Chidori finally awakens. The crew and commander pay their last respects to McAllen and Leon. Later while Captain broods, Chidori suggests Sosuke comforts her. While doing so, Captain erupts in tears. Peacefully, Chidori walks away, accepting what looks like fate. Subsequently, Chidori prepares to return home, but comes across Sosuke who invites her out. Together, they come to his secret fishing spot. When Chidori reminds him she only has 40 minutes left for her flight back to Tokyo, Sosuke assures her he's intended to bring her here from the very start, before they got detoured. He says when he's with her, he feels free enough to do anything and wants her to stay with him for 30 more minutes. Excited, Chidori finally agrees.